Hello, <laughs> welcome to Parenting Live. We're um, talking about, again, about the weekly parenting news, our little roundup of what's been happening in the world of parenting. And I'm here with Tara. Hello. And with Hazel Ann. Hiya. We're from Made for Mums. And we have a great prize today for people who want to add comments and follow us as we're talking. We do. We have this lovely elf. Look at him. Isn't he adorable? Don't you just want one? <laughs> he might be joining in the conversation today as well. You never know. So these are one of the elves that you can sit on. If you don't know about these already, you can sit them on, on your shelf in your kitchen or your sitting room. And they can um, look down on your children and make sure they're behaving. Because they're going to report back to Santa. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're not behaving, maybe they won't get any presents. Yeah. I could do with one of those elves in my house all year round. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you want to get a chance of winning the elf, then um, do you please add some comments and we'll give you until the end of the day? Yeah, end of the day. Brilliant. And then we'll so choose your winner tomorrow morning. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to start with Peter Andre, Tara. I think he we has are... some exciting news today. He... Yes, um, Peter is a dad. He's just had, his wife Emily has just had baby number. Can anyone know? Two. No, not four? two. Four. There you go. Oh, he's baby number four. Yeah, number four. Her sorry, baby her baby number two. Sorry, yes, so... He has Junior and Princess Tiami with um, Katie Bryant. Thank you. And um, he's got uh, Amelia with Emily, and they've just had a little boy. And um, quite an interesting debate, though, because um, they uh, they waited about six weeks before they well before they told everybody the name of the baby last time. Now we're not quite sure whether they've known for longer. But um, a lot of people so are now saying, you know, are you going to be a little bit quicker with deciding on a name? So this is an interesting debate, guys. How? What, what did you guys do in terms of? Um, well, Hazel Ann, when you, if you had children, what will you do? And Helen, what did you do with your with your three? Did you decide the name beforehand? Did you wait until they're born and see what they look like? Yeah, we waited to see what they looked like. We didn't know if we were going to have boys or girls, so that was uh, so we had like, two sort of short lists. But we couldn't agree on any names at all. Oh, so no. we decided in the end, wait for them to come out, and then we'll look at them and see what they look like. Right. Um, and the first, well, the first two that was really hard because they looked like they looked like a baby boy, and that was really hard. The third one, we'd run out of names we'd even tolerate. So oh, no. actually, <laughs> he was going to be called Ed, whether he liked it or not, because there was nothing else that nothing we could else. think of. Um, so yeah, I, in some ways I wish we had thought of a name in advance, it would have made things a bit easier. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was totally opposite, found out what I was having and had her named literally within a week of knowing I was having a girl. And she was Bodhi Ray. Um, Did and she was Bodhi Ray while she was in She was time Bodhi time? Ray from about, yeah, 22 weeks. Oh no. Nice. And um, I used to sing to her a little song about Bodhi Ray um, because kind of figured she's going to look like what I decide to call her rather than the other way around, really. Yeah. But um, I just think it's too important a decision to wait till you've had... And you've got a million other things going on as well. I think and it's good to get it out of the way. The first thing everyone asks. So yes, I'm gonna wait. exactly. Is what you're going to call them and you're going to go, uh... Yeah, so that was exactly. helpful. Yeah. And we didn't well, tell the so. yeah. 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 I've got names already. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. One I don't like, but it's my granddad's name, so oh, okay. the first nice. one has to be named after my granddad. The other two I'm not saying, because um, I Someone said someone <laughs> has already stolen a name. No. My friend um, named his daughter Acacia, and I always love that name. Oh, Acacia, that is nice. Yeah, it is. That is but beautiful. Then, oh, it's gutting when a friend take, takes the name. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, but to be fair... She's about 12 now, so... <laughs> Actually, do you know what I'm talking about? Your, gra your granddad's name, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. She said we decided on the names not knowing what we were having, but we had a boy, and we named him after my husband's granddad that had passed away the year before. Oh, so that's nice. Lovely nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a lovely name, isn't it? Yeah, we like Yeah, unfortunately, the only person that we'd have liked to have named one of our boys after was called Garnet. And we couldn't quite bring oh, ourselves to do a garnet. Is that a baby swan? swan? Hmm? Is that the word for a baby swan? Oh, no, that's a signet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not a nature programme, guys. <laughs> and it's funny enough, I was thinking when you were talking about baby names about um, knowing what we were going to have. Because, of course, I yes. didn't know what we were yeah. going to have. And we had actually a, a good story this week, didn't we, or the end of last week, about um, a celebrity who was really disappointed. Yes. So she found out what she was going to have. Yes. Girl, and she found out 
what she's going to have, and actually that was a huge disappointment. Yeah. Um, but she had the rest of her pregnancy to get used to it. And yeah. I'm wondering what it's like if you are really hoping for a boy or yeah. a girl, and you don't find out, and then you've just got, have you got delivery of your own disappointment, or does it not yeah. matter? Yeah. Probably for about a second, maybe a shock, and then it's, oh, okay. You get on with it, I'd imagine. Or they get it wrong and you get the scan and they tell you you're having a girl and you'd have a boy. So there's <gasps> all sorts of We'd love to know, that's 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 because that's quite common. I think they often get it right if they say it's a boy, it usually is a boy, but some t- often they'll say it's a girl but it's a boy because he's been hiding. <gasps> can't see. Yeah, he was hiding mm-hmm. at the time. So we'd love to know from you guys um, whether you found out, whether you thought you knew and they, the scan had got it wrong, whether you wanted to know and your partner didn't. Maybe one of you found out and the other didn't. That's another interesting oh, one. Oh, I couldn't keep it secret. Wants to know. <laughs> uh, and you don't. That's fantasy. And then Those do you let other people know if you're having... Yeah. You know, do you let other people know? Yeah, That's loads amazing. of stuff. We'd love yeah. to know your thoughts on that whole gender, gender thing, guys. That would be really, really interesting. Yeah. And we also wanted to talk today about Jacqueline Jessa. Oh, yes. Okay, so this is once you've had your baby um, and all the changes that come with... Um, with, with becoming a mum, and in particular, I mean, Jacqueline Johnson has just been voted sexiest woman, sexiest soap woman, woman in soap of the year. Um, but her fiance, uh, Dan Osborne, has said that actually she didn't feel at all sexy after she'd had her baby. Um, she's got a 21 month old called Ella, so I wonder how, I mean, how do we, we feel about that? I mean, things definitely change, not only your body changes. But your priorities change, you're not getting any sleep. I mean, the whole sexy thing. Yeah. It's like go out the, the window a little bit when you when you had a baby. How did it feel for you, Helen? Oh, it's so good for me. And yeah. someone said sex or sleep. I know yeah. I've like, chosen and it wouldn't have been sex. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then because you feel so tired and, and so worn out, um, the idea of feeling sexy as well was just wasn't it wasn't there for me at all. Yeah, that was but a real isn't surprise. It, actually. Sorry, isn't it more important to try and make yourself feel sexy and put in that extra effort just for yourself? Forget your husband, forget your baby. Sorry, for a little bit, you know, about an hour and stuff, and just focus on yourself. <laughs> an hour. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a good theory. It's a good theory. Yeah. And I think actually it'd be good if people could make more of an effort to, to do that. But there's all sorts of issues around guilt as well, and just. You shouldn't be doing anything for yourself anymore, and it's all about your baby. And oh, what if people think oh, I'm doing? I mean, I used to straighten my hair because when the baby's first born, you have about three hours a day where they sort of sleep, and I was quite glamorous because I had hours to straighten my hair. And it's actually when they lose that first nap or they lose that second nap, and you literally don't have any time um, that it that it does all it does all sort of go out the window. And there's also this whole thing that you've become a mum now, and there's this sort of wholesomeness around it's all a bit old fashioned I suppose but but if your body has changed a little bit women. even if you even if you do are lucky enough to do the baby or quickly your your shapes change yeah you, know, you feel yourself and your hair's falling out <laughs> yeah and your skin changes and if that's all wrapped up with how you look is all wrapped up with how sexy you feel yeah then that's quite hard mm. to kind of adjust to isn't yeah it, it can also be that because you know he's a um, reality star and people who are in his field what they look like is everything. So as soon as they have babies, they have to be on Instagram, they have to be on social media showing how good they look. I mean, some, very few do show how, you know, unprepared they might be, but image is everything with them. So maybe it's a lot that they have to think about that and she wasn't prepared for it because she's a... Yeah, she's actress. having to face, face it sooner than the yeah. rest of us. Yeah. 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 It was interesting, we did have a discussion about this on our um, chat forum, actually. Not about feeling sexy, but actually having sex when you first mm. have sex after having the baby. And the range was amazing. There were people who were like, oh, practically 30 minutes later after the baby was born. <laughs> Joking, but it was very soon. <laughs> um, and people who, you know, had a five-year-old and, and still hadn't really mm. got back in the saddle, as it were. Um, and, and that's what's interesting, isn't it? It's one of those things you don't really share with other people. Yeah, um, but actually, I think we're all we're all kind of feeling our way a little bit. And, and um, I yeah. was, yeah. I mean, I must say, I was towards a sort of over a year kind of thing. If my husband's watching this, then <laughs> sorry, darling, <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing personal. Uh, if she had a baby come out of you, then uh, those things all show a little bit. But it's um, like when you when you've just had the baby, and then the midwife or the doctor comes round and wants to have a chat with you about contraception. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
thinking, I'm never going to know why he's anything ever coming near that interview ever again. No, some people need that. I mean, oh. as you know, I've not had children, but I doubt I'm going to wait very long. I mean, me and my friend, she has four kids, and when they tell her, is it like six weeks you have to wait or something? She's like, damn, six weeks! I, I, oh, I mean, like, it, it feels like, the, well, it's probably one of the longest six weeks in your life. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> maybe that's, you know, for some people, that's the way of getting back to being her life was. Maybe. My we, life hasn't still got back to her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if any of you guys want to yeah. share this information, <laughs> Um, then do let us know. I'm not expecting a big response on that one, but you know, <laughs> it might be something you feel you can. It, it's, it's a thing we just, I don't know. Just like, feeling sexy. Maybe. Yeah, yeah just, exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, and guys, remember, because we do have. Talking yeah. of sexy, we've got this. Uh, he's watching. <laughs> he is watching. He's going to comment in Are you enjoying the uh, conversation? Yeah. He's got a cheeky little smile. I think he's uh, getting a little, little embarrassed by this, all this talk, actually. So uh, maybe we should move swiftly on. We yeah. Maybe we should. <laughs> Do you think he'll mind some talk about baby grows? Absolutely not, no. <laughs> Do you like that? Yeah, I think Because Tara, so, Tara yeah. wrote a lovely article um, earlier in the week about um, whether you dress your baby in baby grows from birth or whether you try and do the whole little trousers, little skirt, little dress thing. Yeah. And then um, you had a particular point to make, didn't you? Well, I mean, I was a total baby, baby grow mum. I mean, I never thought of anything else, but it was, it was A, when I'd go out to a shopping centre just to do this little couple of hours push around and I'd see other mums that had dressed their little, their, their little ones up in sort of the dress and the booties and the hair band that I'd feel a bit rubbish, quite frankly. <laughs> Um, and also, um, looking back on all the photos, Bodie's only ever in a sort of slightly orange stained, <laughs> oversized baby grow. And I do wish I'd made a little bit more effort with the photos. Though, on the whole, if I'd had my time again, I probably wouldn't change a thing, actually. Um, how about you, Helen? Because you were a child. I was so you you the opposite. Yeah, and actually, oh, I kind of wished I'd done it your way, baby grow. It's much easier. And they're being sick and. Exactly. Everywhere and, and it's just easier them all the time. Whereas yeah. I had, I had lots of little outfits <clears> for my boys, and um, I think what it was about, it was about. It's a bit sad, really. It was about showing that I was coping, mm. so that um, which I clearly wasn't. Otherwise, I didn't need to have to show people. But um, it was about if I'd got up and it may have taken me several hours, but I got my child dressed, <laughs> yeah. and then we we could go out, and then um, it, it made me feel a bit better about being able to deal with all of this I wasn't doing very well so that made me feel good yeah and the other thing was I had this weird thing I don't know if anyone else can connect to this in any way but um put I put them in a baby grow at night to kind of go to sleep and mm -hmm. clearly my babies didn't go to sleep but it felt another, another thing that felt really good like here you are we've had your bath and you're going to bed now in your baby grow yeah, and in the morning. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And, and again, it made made me feel like I was it's a routine for both of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I quite enjoyed that. I was rubbish at matching. I mean, that's the other thing. You got lots of little clothes, and then of course they're being sick and feeling everything. Yeah, so actually they looked a bit matches. chaotic. Yeah, matches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our mums. We we had so many comments on this. Um, my my little girl was in baby clothes for months. Maybe the odd occasion I'd put her in real clothes, but more often than not, it was because someone had bought her that outfit. Um, they only fit onesies for such a short time, so my babies wore them most of the time. Baby grows make them look like babies, especially with my other babies. I wanted to keep them my baby as long as possible. That's a good point. Um, and then a lot of people just saying they're practical and comfy for baby. And actually, some people said that they thought um, proper clothes were a bit weird on a baby. Yeah, maybe that's true. Oh, they look a bit sort of, yeah. sort of dressed up like a Christmas turkey. Kind of Kosher, you know, yeah. like when you see a little, little boy in a tie and unless they're going to a wedding. Mm -hmm. I don't know, my mum loved dressing herself. <laughs> Couldn't so wait. right from birth, right from birth, dress up. And even when we was about seven, eight, we'd go out in princess dresses every day. Matches. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think there's definitely somebody out there, or some parents out there, who like to just yeah. kind of almost dress up their babies like dolls, in a way, yeah. from birth. Yeah. So we'd love to know from you guys, were you, uh, you baby grow mums or were you just were you, you know, putting your, your little ones in the sort of smart little outfits? So uh, we'd love to know more about mm. that. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, interesting. please let us know. Yeah, an interesting divide you're that one. Uh, we're going to go back a little bit towards, to back to the birth again now because we, we picked up on something that Sarah Jessica Parker mm. um, from Sex and the City said um, not so long ago. She's, um, she's got three children, I think. But um, yeah. 
two are from surrogates. Um, Twins from surrogates. That's yeah. right. And one she gave birth to. Yeah. Um, and she was asked in a magazine if um, if she could have any part of her life again, what would she do? And she said, oh, I'd give birth again, which kind of made me go, really? <laughs> <laughs> and then she... Um, she said, oh, yes, for her birth was euphoric. Yes, that was the word. word. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we were thinking, oh, okay, that's not the word I would choose <laughs> to describe birth for me. I don't know if you had a word you were thinking well, of. Well, yeah. Well. I mean, my word would be, well, if I could have two, it would, it would be painful and there'd be something in front of that. <laughs> <laughs> Just that the pain, the overwhelming pain. I had two paracetamol and that was it. Wow. So, um, yeah, painful. And no, I wouldn't want to do it again. I'm not planning on having any more. So, yeah. admire SJP for that, though. Fair do. Yeah. I think I'd go for, um, my word would be intense. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was really intense. Um, each one of them, for however long, they were all different, but they were all quite an intense thing. And it was kind of, if I could have another word, it would probably be phew, that it was over. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you can think no, of that. I mean, I imagine mine will be crowded. Because <laughs> yeah, in my family, we generally have at least an audience. Yeah, you've always got to have an audience. Everyone's got to be there. So, you know, imagine it's going to be crowded. Oh, no, I don't want it to be. I quite like to go on my own, actually. Actually, actually yeah. I think, yeah, next time I'd like to be in the dark. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what the animals do. They go off to a cave on their own yeah. in the dark. And I love my husband. Again, this is a really bad show for him, but I would probably rather have my mum there rather than him next time as well. Oh, I think I would just prefer to have someone that's gone through it and knows what I'm going oh, through. No, no, my mum would have been telling me I was doing it all wrong. <laughs> And just oh, tried harder. No. And, and oh, no. <laughs> and, oh, no. I guess it totally depends on what your mum's like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think if you've got loads of people, because I'll have my sisters, my cousins, my partner, <laughs> probably. Can I come, Hazel and I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we filmed my nephews and stuff, so it's, it's nothing. Oh, wow. There was a lot of us, and then wow. there was somebody else on the phone while my sister was oh, giving oh, birth. Wow. So. How amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, yeah, so that's something, yeah, because this whole crowd birthing has become a bit of a. Thing apparently where it's not just a you know a really close whether it be your mother or your partner or a sister but it's actually the whole family you know brings a picnic and and film it and that kind of thing <laughs> so I'd love to know <laughs> you just can't keep them out the room no exactly the I'd love to know though that's lovely that's but also I don't know I kind of feel like it would have to be performance then I'd have to do it but in some ways really you just well. really don't care no I suppose you don't you know, you know no that's I mean, true David Beckham could have Tim and I was giving yeah, birth, and I just really, really wouldn't need to carry on. Hi, David. Yeah, I might manage to say hi. <laughs> so, what do you think? Would you um, do you want to give? What, tell us one word you to describe the births that you've had, and and tell us too if you'd like to give birth um, with loads of people there, loads of support, or whether you'd prefer to be on your own or just with your partner. Um, and yeah, we'd love to hear your comments on that. <clears throat> Brilliant. Now, here's a man. Mm. has um, something to talk to us about booster seats because we know this is something that um, everyone's been looking for this week because there's been a lot of um, confusing information around and we know that um, booster seats are incredibly important safety wise as your child gets a bit older and in fact there was quite a, a horrific story from the US um, earlier on this week wasn't there there was a mum who posted up a warning to other mums so like this is what might happen if you child isn't in a booster seat when you have an accident oh, this poor child has yeah. her stomach kind of cut open really by a, a, an ordinary car seat belt so it's a reminder to say saying she wasn't in a booster seat she wasn't in a booster seat she was six and had refused to kind of go in it um, but um, that's reminded us about the importance of them yeah. but also that we're all a bit confused about yeah. what the rules actually are and what the law actually is at the minute there's a lot of misinformation out there isn't there there can be, and you might have seen recent reports of booster seats or things commonly known as booster cushions being banned. Um, in October, the people who make the booster seats and the people who make car seat laws in general came together and confirmed that booster cushions aren't being banned. So they're not being banned? No, they're not. But so that's what, important for people to know then, isn't it? Yes, definitely. So don't... Go, uh, if you're using one at the moment, don't go and throw it away and okay. panic or anything like that. What's important to know is that from January, 
children will have to be at least 125 centimetres tall, which is about roughly the age of seven, year old, seven years old, mm -hmm. to sit in a booster cushion. Okay. Okay. They can still sit in high-backed booster seats, which is or car seats. And again, remember, they should really be in some form of seating device, whether it's a booster cushion or a high-backed booster seat, until they're 135 centimetres tall, which is about the age of 12. So um, we at Made for Mums recommend the high back booster seat type once they're of a certain age. Of course, you'll have to be using a car seat from birth, but um, manufacturers won't be making the smaller booster seats from January. That's the right. cushions. The smaller booster seat cushions. cushions. Oh, okay. From so January. So from January, when you go to the yeah. shops to look for a booster seat, you'll have the. the yeah. From the booster back. cushions, they'll, they'll no, they'll, they'll still be making these, but from seven years old. Oh, I see. Yeah. Sorry. Because currently you can get ones for three years old, four year olds, but from January it'll be just seven year olds and upwards. Hey, so when you say they're not going to be making them, does that mean you won't be able to buy them at all? Or will they be? They might still be some in shops. The ones that are still be here will yeah. still conform under the old ECE R44 laws, so they're still safe to use and you'll still be legal, but they won't be making any more. And eventually, because things in the car seat industry and because it can take years for things to happen eventually they'll phase out right, but okay. they can't just make a law and then yeah. tomorrow everybody has to abide by it yeah. because that would be a bit unreasonable yeah. and the manufacturing and the law makers yeah. um, part so just remember that if you are using a booster cushion for your child as long as they're over seven years old they'll be safe to use they'll be legal so don't stop using one because the reason why they're not banning it it's because a booster cushion is safer than nothing, as you can see yeah. from stories like that. Yeah, absolutely. And it can be a pain, but trying to get your child to sit in them is quite <laughs> hard at that age because yeah. they think it's a bit uncool. Yeah. But I mean, if you you just have to you have to persevere. You do. And of course, we recommend the high back booster seat because it gives them the back support, the neck support, the head support. It's just a little bit more of a cocoon. Mm. But yeah, they look kind of cozy, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're using, if you have, say, um, three children and you just don't have the space for three high back booster seats and your older one, your oldest child is over 125 centimetres tall, then you can move them onto a booster cushion because it just lets them, it elevates them that bit more so that the seat belt fits them a bit and better. And to them, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've got all this information in an article you've written on we our site, which we'll post it's up. It's all link. below, it's all under here, so all the links to the changes and everything are right underneath this post. So thank you to Elizabeth, who's secret woman at Made for Mums. Remember that scene, but she's posting all of that, so we've got information on um, the full law change, um, which is really, really important. There's loads of yeah. that stuff. So that's the takeaway, isn't it? Yeah. These booster cushions, I don't know if you want to show the picture again. These oh. booster cushions are not being banned. They're not being banned, but you will use them for ch older children. That's what's recommended. Mm -hmm. It's so definitely true. better than nothing. Yeah. And if you have any queries or anything, we know that the law seat, um, car seat laws change. We'll keep you updated all the time, but please just add a comment. Um, we will get round to you and we're here to help. Absolutely. So just let us know. It is confusing, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it can be. But Hazelan's fantastic at explaining it all. So do have a look at her article. Brilliant. So I think just unless keep posting your comments because the elf has to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really hope it can be it's on the show. It's such a Christmas. Thank you. Does anyone think these are a bit. He's cute, isn't he? He's not creepy, is he? No, he's <laughs> adorable. Well, you'd want him in your home, wouldn't you? Well, it's something to do for Christmas, isn't it? It is. Well, it does. It does work. It does. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I think he's quite adorable. He's asking for someone to take him home anyway. So. Sure. so <laughs> you until the end of the day. End of the day, and I will pick a winner. Yeah, we'll let mm -hmm. you know tomorrow. And thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.